Finding your destiny. Finding out what God wants you to do and get after it. Get with it. I've got a book and, uh, that I've been reading and it's called Outwitting the Devil. And in the book, and it's not even a Christian book per se. And he says in that book that the devil's number one tool is causing us to drift. In fact, he has a whole section in the book called Drifting with the Devil. No purpose, just meandering like a leaf on a river, just going through with flowing with no purpose, no reason, no rhyme, no logic. God has a purpose and a plan for your life, and he wants you to live on purpose. And if the Lord will help me in the next uh, 20 some minutes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you f discover the core of that purpose. Okay? So uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, one of my main most important scriptures in our ministry here is, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good Amen. and not for disaster to give you a hope and a future. I know a lot of people that say their philosophy in life is, well, if it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have no luck at all. <laughs> and I often, some people I meet, I want to sing them he Haw's theme song. Remember that? <laughs> Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression and pain and misery. <laughs> <clears throat> My voice is going. Sorry about that. It was bad enough already. Uh, and that's worse. Uh, but, but, but that's not God. That's not God's will for your life. You are not an evolved microscopic protoplasm. You did not come through the goo by the zoo and now you you. That is not the way it happened. God formed and created you with a purpose and a reason and he breathed his spirit into you and you became a living soul, a living spirit. You have God's breath in you and it's actually on loan. <laughs> when God gets ready to take it back, he just goes, and we go. And we're done because we got no more breath in us. It's gone. God, that's pretty good. I not thought of that. I like that. That's good. Now, thank you, Lord. Uh, I mean, God, there you go, Mike. Thank you very much. That's, that's a bunch of garbage. What was it Kevin said last week? How they, he asked the, uh, the boy, asked the daddy, how the babies, where the babies come from? He said, well, God put us on here and made Adam and Eve, and, we, and, and then we have babies, and here we are. And Mama said, no, we came from a monkey. And the little boy goes back to Daddy and said, Daddy, you lied. And he said, no, that's your mama's side of the family. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh, that, that, that just ain't, that ain't the way it was, okay? That looks kind of cool drawings, but uh, that's not the way it was. You can take that away, Mike. That's just plain stupid, okay? Uh, uh, God has plans for your life, and they're plans for good. Say, for good. For good. And not for disaster. Not for disaster. To give us a future and a hope. In the book of Ephesians, I last week talked about uh, the, uh, the purpose in, in, in God's plan. And I want to jump in again and read quickly in Ephesians 1 verse 3. All praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us. Woohoo! Say blessed us. Bless. Blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are Americans. No. No. Amen. No. Because we're Mexicans. No. Okay. <laughs> no. Because we are united with Christ. That's it right there. 
It's all about Jesus. Even before the world was made, God loved us and he chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Christ Jesus. That's what he wanted to do and it gives him great pleasure. So, we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us undeserving humans who now belong to his dear son. Sorry for the insertion there, but uh, verse 7. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and he forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. So tempting to stop here and talk, but I'm going to move on. Verse 9. God has now revealed his mysterious plan regarding Christ to us. A plan to fulfill his own good pleasure. And here's his plan, verse 10. At just the right time, God will bring everything together under the authority of Christ. Everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chose us in advance and he makes everything work out according to his plan. Now, now another place in the Bible, it, it, Paul talks about this plan. And he says God's plan was to make one body out of the Jews and us Gentiles. That was why Christ came, was to buy our freedom from our sin and adopt us Gentiles into the Jewish family and to make one people, one people out of the Jews and the Gentiles where there is no more Jew and no more Greek and no more male, no more female, no more black, no more white, only one race and that's human race and we are one family under God if we are in Christ. And that's the bottom line. It is insanity for a Christian to be a racist. It is impossible for a Christian to hate Jews. If you're a Christian, Amen. you can't. We are all, every one of us in this room, have one single set of parents called Adam and Eve. One single, our DNA goes right back to the strand. There's only one race, the human race. I don't care whether you believe it or not. It's the truth. <laughs> it's a fact. Only one race. And all our DNA is intertwined. And, and they've proven it. It goes right back to a single set of parents. God's purpose, verse 12. Here we go. Was that the Jews, who were the first to trust in Christ, would bring praise and glory to God. Now, I want you to take a moment. And let's just look at this verse just a moment. God's purpose for the Jews was that they would bring praise and glory to God. God's purpose for Israel in a multi-religious, pagan world, God's reason for calling Abraham... Isaac, Jacob, the twelve, the, God's purpose for the Jews is that they would honor a monotheistic one God. That was his purpose, that they would bring praise and glory to God. One God in a culture that were throwing babies, can you imagine throwing babies, newborn babies into a fire to appease some pagan god, going up to a volcano and throwing live babies into the, the, the volcano, uh, Pele over in Hawaii, the pagans that still believe in the worship of Pele, the volcano today. And, and you imagine the horror of that. And, and God just it was, was so disgusted with his creation. He said, I'm going to start over and I'm going to choose one man called Abraham. And I'm going to bless him. And we're going to start a race that will honor me. Now Israel failed. Israel got caught up in stupid. 
And they got sidetracked. And they ended up joining in to the pagan worship. Hard as it is to comprehend, Israel got caught up in pagan worship. Read your Bible. Go right through the uh, Kings and Chronicles and the history in the Old Testament. They got caught up in pagan worship. And God was patient and was patient and was patient for hundreds of years. And he told them and he warned them. And just like he's doing today. And people say, ah, nah, this God stuff, it don't matter. We can, I can do anything I want to do. Who's a one man and one woman? Sex is only with a marriage. Sex only within marriage? Are you crazy? Pastor, you don't understand. That's just stupid. Okay, we'll keep it up and go on and we're going to see where our culture is going to end up. Israel began to practice paganism as bad or worse than the pagans around them. And God finally said, enough. And he sent the Babylonians in. They burned the temple. They burned the gates. They killed the king. They butchered the king's sons and punched his eyes out. So the last thing he would see was his kids die. And then they drug them off into poverty. I mean into slavery in Babylon. Horrible, horrible ending. And as I read through Solomon in that temple, in that incredible uh, basin he made called the sea, and, and, and they destroyed it, and they carried it off into uh, captivity, melted it down, made weapons or whatever they made out of it. It is incomprehensible to believe that America could go there. At least that's what we thought 20 years ago. I'm telling you folks, we better be a nation that honors the Lord and pr brings praise and glory to God. So, that's the Jews. They didn't do it. They messed up. Christ came. Verse 13. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth about the good news. That God saves you. And when you believed, when you believed in Christ, He identified you as His very own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom He promised long ago. So you and I, when we accept Christ, we get the Holy Spirit of God and we, in effect, become the same as the Jews. We call ourselves Christians or little Christs or followers of Christ. But we really are uh, God fearers, God believers, God worshipers. We, we are, we're one race with the Jews in Christ. One people. And, 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 and look at verse 14. The spirit that God gives us is the guarantee that he will give us an inheritance that he promised to all of his people. He did this so that we, as his people, would do what? Praise. Praise and glorify God. Your number one destiny and purpose and reason on this earth is to praise and glorify God. The number one reason he put you on this planet is to praise and glorify God. Let me see if this side's better. The number one reason he put you on this planet is to praise and glorify God. <laughs> Give us another chance. That's how the middle does. The number one reason he put you on this planet is to praise and worship God. <laughs> All right, I'll give you guys a chance to redeem yourself, all right? Uh, the number one reason he put us on this planet was to praise and glorify God. Yeah. All right, okay. You better get with it, okay. So, now, that's what he wants us to do every day, every day, every day, every day. He don't care if you're a butcher, a baker, a candlestick maker. He don't care if you're a doctor, a lawyer, a janitor, a, a, a nurse, a, a preacher. He wants us to glorify God. A used car salesman? A new car salesman? A grease monkey? A tow truck driver? A garbage truck driver? Or a honey bucket driver? He don't care. It don't matter to God. As long as you walk in integrity and honesty and loyalty and faithfulness to God and your fellow man. Amen. Jesus said, Greatest commandment is you love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second one's like unto it, that you love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. He, he, he wants us to praise and glorify God. That's what he created us for. Let me tell you, the devil has stolen the music that God gave the church and perverted it. We, we got the best music there is. I mean, we got... Many of the R&B singers, many uh, of the soul uh, family singers learned in church. Yep. They got to start in church. 
And the devil twisted and perverted it. And he knows that if he can do that and take them off into stupid land, it's unbelievable what he can accomplish through godly people who one time walked with the Lord and, and, and sung and learned to praise God. And uh, I mean, Elvis learned what Elvis learned in church. He learned to shake, rattle, and roll watching a preacher up there getting with it. It's true. It's true. His mama, uh, Sherman Andrews, who used to come up here with us, we used to gather around after an Elvis concert and sing almost all night long gospel songs all night long with Elvis after he had just done a two-hour crazy, draining uh, rock and roll concert. And Elvis wanted to go gather around the piano and sing mm -hmm. gospel songs. And the devil knows if he can pervert your destiny... He can take the gifts that God gave you and twist it and use it for His glory instead of yours. His. Oh my, i got to hurry. Verse 12, I want to, excuse me, verse 15, I want to read the prayer quickly that Paul prayed for the Ephesians and us. Paul said, ever since I first heard about your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, there you go, strong love for God, and love for people. I have not stopped thanking God for you. And I pray for you constantly. Asking God. Look what he prayed. The glorious father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To give you spiritual wisdom and insight. So that you might grow in your knowledge of God. Oh my prayer for you. Is that you would get spiritual insight. Spiritual wisdom and insight. So that you would grow in your knowledge of God. And I'm going to stay here long, but I just want to say, as part of your destiny, when you get spiritual wisdom and insight, you will learn the value of reading your Bible every day. You will learn the value of spending a quiet time with the Lord every day. Whether it's first thing in the morning or last thing at night or all or both and a little bit at lunch. Whatever it is, you will learn the value, the value, the value of growing in your knowledge of God and how that will cause you to change. I've done a lot of work over the years with the 12-step uh, program and, uh, uh, for many years. And, and many of the people who go through the 12-step program mess up. And when they leave the program at step 5 and they miss step 6 through 12, which is all about renewing your mind and changing the way you think and getting and growing in the knowledge of God. Amen. You can work the steps all day long, but if you stop at 5 or 6 and you don't pursue the rest of them and keep pursuing them and keep pursuing them and keep pursuing them you will not grow in your knowledge of God and when you don't be careful you go back to stupid yes. so important so important so important that we understand look at verse uh, look at where did I go uh, verse uh, 18 I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope that God has given to those he called his holy people who are rich and glorious inheritance. He is rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. That this the same power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in his place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realm. We have no idea of the greatness of God's power that he has in us. Amen. Man, it is unbelievable, guys, if you could catch the power that God has deposited in you when he put his spirit in you. When he filled you with his Holy Spirit, the incredible power. And I just encourage you to take that one verse and meditate on it and, and look at it and, and, and think. Uh, it, it is absolutely amazing that God has put that mighty power in you. Verse 21. Now, God is far above any ruler or authority or, or power or leader or anything else. Not only in this world, but in the world to come. Look at this, verse 22. And God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. church. Who's the church? Who's the church? You are, we are, I are, we are the body of Christ. He's put everything under authority of Christ. 
and made him the head over all things for your benefit. And you believe this sociological lie that we're just victims of a d detestable plot to destroy the world, destroy our lives, and, and spinning out here in space and live our life of misery. No! That's the devil's plan for you. God's plan is for you to have an abundant life beyond anything you ever imagined. Beyond anything you ever imagined. God's plan is for you not to be broke, not to be enslaved to addictions. God's plan is for you to be blessed and be given money away. Let me tell you something. There is no greater joy in, in a human being's life than being able to walk up and bless somebody with a $100 bill. There ain't one there, but I'm just saying. Uh, you know, being able to, to give and bless somebody and do something for someone less fortunate. That's what God wants you and I to do as part of our destiny. And we praise God. And you give them that meal, you give them that gift card, or you do whatever, and you say, just thank God. Yeah. We had a little girl stop by the church a few weeks ago, and she wants some gas money to get back to Seward. And I said, well, we, our protocol is you call Love, Inc., Love, Inc., to the rescue. So the little girl called him. She was in an old uh, beat-up Ford truck. Uh, and and uh, just kidding, just, just kidding, my Ford buddy up here. And, and uh, I mean, he probably got eight miles of the gallon or ten maybe. It was an older truck and, and they weren't going to give her $10. I said, you need some gas? I said, let's go. So I took her and her boyfriend, whatever, down to Fred Myers and, and I filled her tank up. And, and, and it, was just, it wasn't me, it was you. You paid for it, I didn't. I used a church credit card, 35, 37 bucks, whatever it was, filled up her car and, and sent her on her way. And I said, just remember where it came from. Yeah. And just go to church. You go to church? Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes, you know, she gave me this song and dance. I, I said, well, you just go to church. You remember God blessed you and God gave you that. On the way. Hey. Little stuff, I mean, it's not rocket science. You can do it. Yeah. We can all do it. God called all of us. I got to hurry. Let's jump down to chapter 2, verse 1. Chapter 2, verse 1. Once you were dead, because, now, now he changed his thoughts here. He says, once you were dead, all of you, you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. You know, and, and I'm, I'm sure probably somebody won't like this, but uh, it just works for me, okay? But one of the greatest uh, pictures of this for me is in the new Star Wars movie. When, when one of the stormtroopers is fighting and killing all these, uh, the, the uh, rebellion, they're killing them, and, and all of a sudden he looks over and his eyes connect with this person. And you can see him just tilt his head, even inside of his helmet. And all of a sudden he takes off his helmet. And he decides right on the spot to change sides. He walks away from the power of darkness. The he walks away from the emperor and his forces. The dark side. And he gives his heart to God, to, to God, and my, my suggestion, he, he joins the light, the, the, the right side, the rebellion, and that's what we really are in our world today. By the way, if you don't realize it, we Christians are part of the rebellion. We used to be part of the mainstay of society. Now we are the, the thugs. We're the, we're the low life Woo! in a lot of people's minds. Amen. Yeah, I mean, they, they look at us like we're, we're less than. But because we are part of the rebellion. We're rebelling against the devil, the commander of the powers of the unseen world. It really is. And, and so, uh, so, verse 7. God, oh no, excuse me, where was I at? Yeah, is that verse? Three. Three. Yeah, I knew I was in the wrong place. Okay. All of us used to live that way. Yes, you. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger just like everyone else. All of us. You know, I, I, as a pastor, uh, Kelly, uh, we've been doing this for a lot of years. And, and, I, and I want to tell you, I've met a lot of religious people that are in church every Sunday. 
that are living their life following their passionate desires and inclinations of their sinful nature. I've met a lot of Christians who go to church and they praise and worship God and they got tongue that long. Gossip and lie and cheat and do things that would, they'd rather jump off the top of this building than take a drink of whiskey, but they got a tongue that long to backbite and slander everybody in town and the preacher. And, and that's following the inclinations of the sinful nature. Because see, when I'm putting you down, it's making me look good. And the only reason I condemn you and judge you and put you down is because it makes me feel good and looks good, which is following the inclinations of my sinful nature. I forget who it was. I don't know if it was Johnny or somebody sent me a text yesterday. It was awesome. And it was a Facebook, a Facebook message or a text. And it said, the quote, I knew he was a judgmental person when I saw him. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, no. Say, well, no, I've been a Christian since I was eight years old. Okay, well, cool. Uh, but you ain't been perfect since you was eight years old. All of us have fallen and stumbled and, and messed up, even preachers. See, God is not concerned about whether you're a preacher or whether you're a plumber. God's concerned if you are following Him and not following our flesh. All of us used to live that way. But, verse 4, God is so rich in His mercy, and He loved us so much, that even though we were dead because of our sins, He has given us life when He raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you've been saved. Amen. Only by God. Some of y'all should have been a greasy spot in the middle of the road a long time ago. Hello. I'm just saying. Some of us, excuse me. Yeah. And it's a fact. But God, verse 4, who is so rich in His mercy, He loved us. Even though we were dead because of our sins, He gave us life when He raised Christ from the dead. And it is only by His grace that we've been saved. Verse 6, For He raised us from the dead along with Christ and is seated with us in the heavenly realms because, because, because we are united with Christ. Why? So that God can point to us in all future ages as examples of His incredible wealth and grace and kindness toward us as shown in all He has done for us in Christ Jesus. He wants it. See, He, he called Eric to, to follow and Kelly to follow Christ because he wants to, uh, uh, kids or people to say, hey, we got this Mexican gang dude at our church. I mean, if God can save him, man, he can save anybody. I mean, the dude's got a testimony you wouldn't believe. We got this other guy who was in prison until he was 40 some years old and never been claimed more than a few months. And you wouldn't believe what God did in that boy. And God wants to use you and every one of us so that he can point to the devil, to the world, to other believers. Look what incredible incredible grace God has for you. Amen. And if He can do it for you, He can do it for any of us. Amen. If He can do it for me, He can do it for any of us. You say, well, Pastor, you don't understand. You have no idea the sins I've committed in my life. Hey, let me tell you a secret. You have no idea the sins I've committed in my life. And I pray to God you never know. <laughs> I was raised in the woods in South Carolina. You have no idea. Before I was 17, I'd done enough for a whole lot of years. And I ain't going there. And thank God that Alan died. A new Alan got up off the beach in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, 1971, and walked away. Left that old carcass to go out with the tide. And I'm telling you, friend, it don't matter where you've been, what you've done, it don't matter. If you're listening today by, by live stream or, where, or by podcast, wherever you may be, it don't matter. God loves you. Amen. Verse 8 says, God saved us by His grace when we believed. And you can't take credit for it. It's a gift from God. Amen. It's a gift from God. 
God gave it to you. Verse 9, salvation is not a reward for the good things you've done so that none of us can brag about how great, what a great Christian I am, what a great man of God I am. It ain't about you. It's about God. And I am only a great man of God because God saved me by His mercy. Otherwise, I'd be a greasy spot in the road with my eyes bugged out for the stupid I've done over the years. I'm telling you, God loves you. And I'm closing with verse 10. Uh, I'm trying to, okay? Trying to close, all right? Verse 10. We are God's masterpiece. Wow. Wow. Look over at somebody beside you and say, I am God's masterpiece. I am God's masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece. Now, now, now God will fry a masterpiece in a minute. Listen to me. God will fry a masterpiece in a minute if the masterpiece don't do what He created it to do. Amen. You and I are God's crowning creation. All the things He created in read Genesis. Read it. It was good. It was good. It was good till He made man. He stopped back and looked and said, It's very good. We are God's crowning creation and He loves you so much and He's got great things planned for you but you and I got to do them. He's got great things planned for you and I. We are His masterpiece. He created us anew in Christ Jesus to do good things. But just coming to church don't make you a Christian. No more than going to the barn makes you a cow. <laughs> Looking like, spelling like, and talking like a cow doesn't make you a cow. I told him in first service, I said, I speak cow. <laughs> I do. I've gone up near blown her mind. I've gone up to the side of a fence. Whole herd of cows out there in the field back down. Y'all know how it is in North Carolina, all them cows out there. I put up beside the fence, I go, Boy, they come looking. I've had 20, 30 cows standing by. That don't make me a cow. You might speak Christianese, but it don't make you a Christian. If you don't have a heart, transformation. Surrender your mess to God and let God give you His Holy Spirit. And He will create, he'll create a new spirit in you. And God's been putting this on my heart. I don't know if you picked up me saying it. Just in the last few months, God gives you a brand new heart. And He gives you a brand new start. I never said that before, but it's just kind of come on me in the last few weeks, that little, little ditty. It, God's given you a brand new heart. He's given you a brand new start. Would you stand? <sighs> Father God, I thank you for our time together today. Thank you for speaking to us by your Holy Spirit through your word. I am grateful. But well, God, I pray today that everyone under the sound of my voice, whether here or, or listening somewhere around the world or wherever they may be listening today, I pray that everyone listening to me would, 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 would know and acknowledge that you're God. It is you that's made us and not we ourselves and that we are your people created in your image to do your will. To bring praise and glory to you, number one. And to do good works in honoring our fellow man, and in loving and honoring you in everything we do. But let me tell you something. If you're here today, and you don't know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, or you're listening wherever you may be listening, and you don't know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, I want to tell you, God loves you. And God wants to give you that brand new heart. He wants to give you that brand new start. But you and I, have got to take a step toward Him. He's taken a huge step toward us. And now we've got to take a step toward Him by saying a simple little prayer. So if you're here today and you don't know the Lord or you don't know for sure that if you were to die today, you'd go to heaven, I want you to pray this prayer with me. I'm telling you, young people, old people, whoever you are, if you don't know for a fact that if you were to die today, you'd go to heaven, I want to challenge you with every head bowed and every eye closed. I want you to pray this little prayer with me to simply say, God, I know I'm a sinner. God, I know I'm a sinner. And I know I've done wrong. And I ask you today to come into my life, in my heart, and be my master and my Lord. I believe that Jesus Christ died on a cross. And I believe He rose from the dead. And today, I give you my life. I surrender control of my life to you.
And I ask you to give me a brand new heart. And I ask you to give me a brand new start today, July 24th, 2016. A brand new start today. God, thank you for forgiving my sins, for cleansing me, writing me, my name down in your book. And God, from this day forward, I will do the best I can to grow and become the child of God you've called me to be, to praise and glorify your name. I thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. And God, I pray that everyone that prayed that prayer, no matter where they may be, God, that you'd speak peace into their heart right now and let them know you heard that prayer. Let them know in a way they and they alone will know that you know and that they know you heard their prayer. I thank you for it. And I commit it to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise in here. Amen. Woo! Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Don't forget the water baptism this evening, 6 p.m. on DeVille Road.